Hey there, my name is Matthew Peterson. I'm a trainer at Pragmatic Works. Uh, we're located in Northeast Florida. And I do a lot of training on Power BI, Power Apps, Power Automate. Uh, and for this week's video, what I wanted to do is bring two of those programs together, Power Apps and Power Automate. A lot of times after making an app with uh, some people, they always, not always, but a lot of times will ask, hey Matt, is there a way that after a record has been created uh, that I get some kind of email or that we send an email to somebody else? Uh, and they didn't want to go and do it manually, obviously, they wanted to set this up automatically. Well, this is where Power Automate comes into play. Uh, and so in this video, I'm going to show you a very basic way of how after a record has been created, an email is sent out. Uh, in the next video that I do, we're going to take it to a little bit more of an advanced level. So let's just go take a look at my scenario here and see how this is actually done. So what I'm doing uh, is I have a table in Dataverse, but your table could be anywhere that you wanted it to be. Uh, and my goal that I'm, I'm using here is back when I used to be a teacher, uh, I always had a class competition where the students would get points for positive things and they would lose points for their class for negative things. Uh, then at the end of the quarter, the class that had the most points gets certain kinds of rewards. And I always just did that up on a dry erase board. Uh, and then at the end of the day, I would tally it all up uh, and then just keep that going throughout the, the nine weeks. Well, if I would have known about Power Apps back then, that would have been awesome because I could have done uh, saved a lot of time and, and, and effort. So what I've done here, let's take a look at the data, is I have the class and period that the student uh, got their score in, the name of the student, how many points they earned, and I'll zoom in, uh, as well as why they got their points and the date that they got the points on. So that is just what the data looks like. So I always think it's better to know what the data looks like before we actually get into the app itself. So here's what the app is. So I'm just gonna hit the play button and I simply come over and pick the class that I'm going to put the points in. And based on my class selection, it filters down to what students are actually in that class. So we will give, uh, we'll give some points today to Bella. And I'm gonna say, let's add a student score. And we're gonna say that she, uh, let's go with, she corrected the T, now let's go with helped another student. And for helping another student, she's gonna get 10 points. Uh, and we're gonna put very, thoughtful. Thank you. And then I'm going to click submit score. Great. And now we see it right here. And this was the first part of the app. And then the next part that I wanted to do is let's send this to the parents. Let's let them know that they did something good. Uh, and so you could figure out how you would use this in your app, but this is a record has been created. Now I want to send an email. So let's go into the power automate part now to see how can we send an email. So over in Power Automate, <clears throat> we're gonna hit on our flows. And the flow that we are going to do is gonna be called an automated flow. You would think that all of them are automatic, but there's different kinds of flows themselves. Uh, an automated one is just looking for something to happen in the background. And that's what we're really going for here. So I'm gonna do an automated cloud flow. And then what we need, we need to give it a flow name. So I'm gonna call this Peterson email. And now we need a trigger. What's gonna kick this thing off? What is when it when something happens, when do we do our, our events? And so we're saying, well, when a record has been created in our application. So for the search all triggers, I'm actually just gonna look for that. So when a record is created, and let's see what it comes up with. Um, and it's not gonna be for SharePoint because mine is in the Dataverse or what's also referred to as common data service. So let's just keep scrolling down to see if we find anything in here. And there it is, when a record is created. So we're gonna put a check mark there. And now we're gonna come on over and click create. And so this is the trigger action, when a record is created. So I first have to say, what environment is this in? Uh, and this is also a very important part. If you're a part of multiple environments, make sure you put your flow in the same environment with your app. So my app is in my mockups environment, so I need to make sure my flow is also in my mockups environment. So for the environment, I need to select my mockups. Once it comes up, here we go. The entity name is the table that it's actually looking at to see when a new record has been submitted. Uh, so mine is called the student score logs. And these options will change based on whatever data source you are using. So student score logs, and then the scope is just who does this apply to? I want this to apply to everybody within my organization. And now we're going to hit a new step. So we're going to say, what once a record is created that kicks the flow off, now what do we want to happen? Well, now what I want to happen is to send out an email. 
So for the search, I'm just going to put in send email and see what comes up. And there's quite a few different options here of sending an email. Uh, now I want to do it through Office 365 Outlook. So when I go to Office 365 Outlook, we see that there's a lot more options here that we can do. So now I'm going to actually search within Office 365. And this is the one I want, the send an email v2. Now this is the great part. We put who is it to? And again, in my next video, we'll talk about how to make this dynamic. Uh, because in my student score logs, I currently don't have the parents' email addresses. They're actually in a different table. Uh, but for today, in this first one, we're going to keep it basic, and I'm just going to send the email to myself. So I'm just going to look for myself in here. And there we go. And we'll zoom on in. And then the subject. What do we want the subject of the email to say? And I'm going to do something like new score four. And see, here's the beautiful thing. Because the trigger was when a record is created, it knows that Automate has access to all of the columns for that individual record. And these are all of my column names that I showed you earlier. So I'm going to say a new score for the student name. So it'll bring in that value of that record underneath the student name column. And then I'll come down here into the body, and we're doing the same thing. I'm going to go um, student name has earned. We'll just go with earned. We want to put in the points. Now, just something to be made uh, aware of, sometimes all of your columns don't show up that it actually brings in, and you actually have to search for it. Uh, so if you have lots and lots of columns, it doesn't display all of them all the time. So here's my points. So earned, and let me put a space in here. And then let me actually write the word points, because this is only going to give me the number. And then we're going to say four. And then we have that score category, so that way we know why they're getting their points. So the score category value. And then we're going to say on the actual date. And that is it. That is, now I'm going to come up here and hit save. And actually, let me put in a, a period there. We'll hit save. And as it saves it, <clears throat> once it is saved, now all that's going to happen is when a record is created, we will actually be able to see it. I should get an email. So let's try this out, cross our fingers. So let's come back on over and let's make a new record. So well, this time we'll go to somebody else. We'll go to Mr. Lovett's class and let's see what students we can pick from. We'll go with Irma and we'll add a student score. And let's say Irma got a perfect score on a test. 20, your hard work is paying off. So notice I also could have brought in the comments uh, in that flow. Again, any of these columns I could have put into that email. Uh, I just chose not to put the comments in there. So we're going to hit submit score. And now that the new score is successfully submitted, my email is lighting up. So let me go get that email and bring that email right on over. And here it is. Irma French earned 20 points for, and now this is where we're running into some issues. Uh, and these are what we're going to fix in the next video. Well, this one right here, this is because this is a lookup column uh, within Dataverse. So this is where things get a little bit awkward. So in my next video, we're going to show you how to fix that. But this one we're actually going to fix right now. I don't like the way that this has been formatted. Uh, maybe I don't really know, need to know what time this has actually been done. So that's what we're going to fix at this moment. So what we're going to need to do is it's our it's our score uh, date that's given us those cre that the the date value the format that I just don't really like and so what we can do is we can actually format this uh, so this is going to be a little bit different it's not as easy just putting score date here so I'm going to get rid of score date and now what I'm going to do is use a function called the format date time so this is in the expression so you can write expressions within Power Automate so I'm going to come over here to expression. And we're going to type in format date time. And so when it says format date time, the first thing we're going to have to do is start it off with some parentheses. Like every function, it needs something. And it says, hey, in order to do this, I need the timestamp. What is it that you're trying to alter format wise? Well, I'm trying to alter that, that score date. So I'm going to come on over back to the dynamic content. So we're going to come back to our dynamic content, and we actually are going to bring in that score date right here. 
So now this is where it gets, it's a little bit hard to zoom in here, so I do apologize, but when I put in all of that, it does all the hard code for me. So this is actually going out from that record is created and bringing back the Peterson score date. Next thing I need to do, so that is the timestamp itself. Now I need to put in a comma, and now this is saying, I'm asking for, they wanna know what format do you want this in? Uh, and so the format that I want it in, and you put it in single tick marks, let me zoom on in a little bit here and get this off the way. And I want the, <clears throat> the months to, to show first. And so you might think to do lowercase m, lowercase m. Uh, but if you do that, that actually brings back the minutes. So if you want the month numbers, you have to use uppercase m, uppercase m. So we're going to go uppercase m, uppercase m, slash dd for the two-digit day, and y, 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 y for the four-digit year. And then once I have that, I simply click on OK. And now that date time should be located and formatted a little bit differently for me when I do this again. So we're gonna hit save. And then we're, once this is done saving, we're gonna put one more record in and see if it worked for us. All right, so let's go back. We'll go to Chandler. We will pick a student. We'll go with Rishi here, add a score. Uh, this time he had late homework. So we're gonna give him negative five points. We'll click submit, and then let me go pull up that email which just hit the inbox. And here it is. It says Rishi earned negative five points for, again, that's something I'm gonna fix in our next video. But there we go, we now have the appropriate March 20th, 2021. So that is how you can do a format of a date uh, if you've ever had any issues with that in the past. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this video. Again, in our next one, we're gonna go a little bit more advanced. Uh, we're gonna figure out how can we look up to a different table that has our email addresses and also how to fix lookup values within Dataverse to show the actual real value and not this random code. Uh, please like, subscribe, comment below. Also, if you are interested in any training uh, from Pragmatic Works formal training with on-demand learning, uh, take a look in the description video below for a 20% off discount coupon code.